Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, is another movie review. Yes, I know it's been a really friggin' long time since I went to Disney and all that. I believe the last uh, movie review I did was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, I believe. Uh, I knew I did a throwback with Kong Skull Island, but... Anyways, uh, I'm back, and I saw Joker, and we're gonna be review uh, reviewing that today. Now, uh, this video is gonna have some spoilers in it, so I'm gonna do the spoiler part toward the end of the video. Uh, so just telling you guys now, there are spoilers for the film's ending and different plot points at the end of the video right now, though, it's just going to be a normal, non-spoiler review. So, um, of course, this movie's been getting a lot of buzz, right? Oh, it's the best movie of 2019. That's amazing. Joaquin Phoenix is great. Uh, you know, singing the high praises, right? Now, you guys know me. I don't trust anyone's opinion but myself, and I have to see this movie to know if it's going to be, you know, crap or good or not. And let me tell you, this is not the best movie of 2019. I don't think I have a best movie of 2019 yet, because Star Wars is still coming out, and Adam's Family... And, uh, oh, I don't know, Gemini Man, something else, maybe, I don't know. But, anyway, like I'm saying, I'm going to tell you, maybe make a video in the end of the year telling you my favorite movie. But, uh, I will tell you this, that Joaquin Phoenix is the best actor that we've seen for Joker. Not ditching Heath Ledger, or Jack Nicholson, or, uh, you know, all the animated guys, but he is the best. Now, like, when I watch The Dark Knight, or any movie, I, I don't really think this, but, you know, you kind of figure in your head, oh, you know, I'm watching that guy play this guy, you know, Heath Ledger is playing Joker. Uh... Troy Baker is voicing Batman, you know, same kind of thing. Uh, but in this movie, when I see Joaquin Phoenix, I didn't think that. I thought, okay, this guy, Joaquin Phoenix, he is the Joker. He's not playing the Joker, he is the freaking Joker. And that's the best thing I think I can say about that guy. He's a great actor. Um, I've only seen one movie with uh, Walk the Line, which was Johnny Cash uh, in high school, actually. Very good movie. However, he is the Joker. This guy is amazing. Like I said, I love all the other Jokers. I think they're really, really good. Uh, they're all great actors and all that, but this guy is the Joker. Now, uh, Zazie Beetz, who, of course, was Domino in Deadpool 2. She's, of course, playing Sophie. I believe Sophie Turner, maybe? I'm just going to call her Sophie, though. Uh, she was a great, you know, great job. Robert De Niro, um, Murray Franklin. Oh, who else? So many guys. Uh, so many so many awesome actors in this movie. I think everyone did a great job. So acting, of course, uh, is going to get a good review for me, of course, especially Joaquin Phoenix. Again, he he's the show stealer, man. He walks away with Joker. Again, he is the freaking Joker, which is the best thing I can say. Um, as far as the plot... If you've seen the trailer, you know, uh, like the Joker's real origins in the comics and in the Killing Joke and everything, uh, it's, it's more multiple choice, right? And as he said, says in the Killing Joke, uh, there really is no definitive Joker origin. You know, he gets bullied, he's a stand-up comedian, he falls into some acid, you know, whatever. Harley Quinn gets involved, all this all this stuff. You know, he kills his parents in the 89 film, so it's, it's a whole thing. Uh, Bruce Wayne's parents. So, like this movie, again, I'm going to talk about this in my spoiler part, but... Essentially, the plot is uh, Arthur Fleck, who's the Joker, gets beat up, and he gets made fun of, and he gets put down, and all the all, basically he's it's his life is so friggin' negative that he snaps and he becomes a Joker. Now, this is a very sad movie, and in fact, um, I was talking about my mom, and she's like, "I'm not seeing this movie; it's too sad." And I saw it with one of my buddies, and uh, it was it was great. I mean, really, but it, it's a sad movie. You know, I, I I really don't like the movie Inside Out too much because it's so depressing. It's like stupidly sad. Um, it's a well-made film, but, you know, just like Frozen, I think Frozen's kind of girly. Uh, Inside Out is just too depressing. I don't really like rewatching it too much, you know. Um, not that I'm, I don't like drama or anything, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. And this movie is extremely sad, like I'm saying. You know, there's a lot of, and again, most of this is kind of spoilery, but everything Arthur does just gets tossed in his face, quite literally sometimes. And uh, it's just a big mess, you know. He gets made fun of. It's, it's just a whole thing. And uh, it's really not good, you know. There's only so much a person can take. Now, uh... Really quickly, I'm going to dive into the uh, criticism or the uh, controversy behind this film. Uh, I'm just going to say right out, uh, SJWs and liberals, white male hate, F that. I have nothing to do with that. I watch a movie for the movie. I don't, I don't go, oh, white male hate, F worst movie ever. I don't do that shit. I am literally just the guy who sits down and watches a movie the right way. That's how you should watch a movie. And honestly, um, I didn't think that was in this movie at all because apparently the people who say Joker is apparently now a big issue for society haven't seen anything Joker related ever apparently because he's always a white dude that goes crazy now again that's just another side of cinema that I'm not going to get into because I think it's BS and it's just stupid or bantha fodder or whatever I don't like it now with that out of the way let's continue with the review I thought I'd just tell you about the whole controversy and why that's going crazy why everyone's you know in the news and all that but um again acting is great but the controversy it it kind of gets out of hand it's just a movie guys calm down now I know my viewers, though, you guys are cool, but, you know, some people are just crazy, you know. Um, but with this whole thing of the plot of Joker, like I said, Joker going crazy, it really, this movie is, 
it's realistic, you know. That's the next thing I want to talk about. It's realistic. Uh, you know, most DC, most comic book movies, for the most part, can can be looked at in a realistic world. Of, you know, of course, guys can't get bit by spiders and swing around, and you know, we don't see Batman flying across Cleveland or you know, Akron, whatever. But it's or anywhere. <laughs> you know, what I mean, why would you be Batman at Disney World? Anything, you know. But this whole thing of uh, you know, Batman flinging around and Robin and superpowers and Solomon Grundy and and you know, Joker with whoopee cushions and all that. This is a very grounded DC film. In fact. This might be my favorite DC film ever because of how grounded and realistic it is. And I know DC is normally more gritty than Marvel. Uh, however, this movie, it's R-rated, yes. There is maybe, I don't know, 20 F-words. There's no sex scene. Um, of course, there's smoking, whatever. But there's there's a lot of gore, right? If you've seen the spoilers, I'm not going to tell anything about that. But there, it's, it's bloody. It's pretty violent. Uh, definitely the most violent we've seen the Joker or any DC character, really. I know Beef from Vendetta and Watchmen are DC, too. But, I mean, like, those are kind of B-list DC, uh, but still, at the same time, um, it is a very violent film, and going with that, uh, it's extremely, I don't know, it can be kind of off-putting, but at the same time, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really weird to see Joker doing all these things. Now, it works for, this, for the plot, but at the same time, it's a little weird, you know, I'm mean, seeing Joker kill people, but at the same time, I do really love that aspect of the film, how it is rated R. I think really the, the reason why it's so dark and gritty is because uh, it's sad. I mean, it really is. You know what I mean? Like, this is the first, this is one of the, I don't know, it's hard to say. I think about every movie because I'm the franchise fanatic. I love all these, I love all franchises and I think about them a lot because I love them. However, there's only a few movies that I think about, like, continuously. And I know I just saw Joker yesterday and I'm reviewing it now, but The Last Jedi is one of them. There's so many, say what you want about Last Jedi and then you're reviewing all those movies in December, but there's nothing you can deny about this is that The Last Jedi is a very thought-provoking movie. There's a lot of, uh, weaving tales and, you know, different pieces and set, set pieces and uh, things like that that you can really think about, you know, hope and loss and revenge and redemption and, you know, creating monsters that you intentionally tried to save and all this stuff. So it's it's a beautiful movie, The Last Jedi. And Joker is the same thing, too. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, like, always thinking about it, but, you know, it's a movie that you can think about in different ways. You can interpret it in different ways. And you can go, okay, yeah, Arthur Fleck is getting bullied really badly, and he kills and hurts people that bully him. That's not a spoiler, we all know that. So, yes, it, it was weird, you know what I mean? Because I'm watching this movie and I'm like, okay, good. He's getting bullied and he's hurting the guys that bully him. You feel good for Arthur, right? Oh, good, stand up for yourself. But you don't need to kill your enemies, you know what I mean? Talk to them. Beat them up if you have to, if it's self-defense. Which There is a few cases in this movie where Arthur does self-defense, but of course that leads to him becoming the Joker in the end. It's like I said, it, it's a really weird thing. And I'm not trying to say, you know, kill your bullies. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm just simply saying, you know, everyone in the world... When you're getting bullied, you just want to punch them back, you know what I mean? But sometimes going too far leads to creating yourself being a monster. So it's a whole thing. Uh, the moral of the movie is Gotham is a really effed up place no matter what you do. No matter where you are in Gotham, it will corrupt you, you know what I mean? But it is a great movie. Again, it's thought-provoking. It's uh, sad. It's disturbing. It's funny at times. There's a few funny moments, um, intentionally and unintentionally. I did laugh at one joke where nowhere else laughed. And then there were like five people in the theater, and I was like, Come on, guys, that was funny. Laugh. You know what I mean? It was just really weird. So, anyway, um, going forward, I do have to say that, I don't know, see, I don't know if this is my favorite DC movie, but by far this is the best interpretation of the Joker, because not only, you know, most versions of Joker, he's already Joker, right? You know, bat acid and everything, he's, oh, bats, I'm gonna kill you! You know what I mean? All this stuff. Um, but having Bruce Wayne as a little kid in this movie is perfect, because yeah, it's set in 1981 or 79, whatever, but at the same time, Man, I just get chills when in that scene from the trailer where he does this to Bruce Wayne. I mean, it's so effing cool, man. It really is. It's awesome. As a, as a hardcore DC fan, it's really cool. Now, there are some things. Uh, yes, it's a DC film, but the best thing about Joker is that you can look at it as just a regular movie, and they somehow got the uh, license to say the Joker's name. That's basically what it is, you know. It doesn't really fit like a DC movie. You know, you're not seeing Batman fly across. He's a little kid. You don't see Robin. You see Alfred, and you see, of course, Thomas Wayne and Martha, and you see Gotham, but strip all that away, and it really is a good movie that if you don't like DC films, if you're like, oh, I don't like superhero movies, watch this, because this is not a superhero movie. And yes, it technically is a comic book movie, but I'm going to call it a tragedy. Uh, this is really, really is a tragedy, guys. Like, I walked out of this movie sad as fudge, because I'm like, you know, normally it's just a movie, it's fake, whatever, but... It's realistic because this stuff happens to people in real life. They get pushed, they get uh, pushed and, and bullied, and they say, to hell with it. I'm going to go, you know, retaliate and do something back. So it really is a, 
it's a thing that F's people up in real life, and that's why it hit home for, I think, a lot of people on the internet with the whole controversial thing. Um, but again, all that is saying, of course, guys, I'm going to give Joker an A+. Plus. Um, and not just because everyone else is. Everyone else loves it. Um, again, watch it for yourself. There are people that hate it. There are people that love it. There are people that think it's okay. Um, watch my review. If you've seen Joker, tell me what you think. Uh, but again, I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. It's a perfect movie. Um, again, maybe not my best movie 2019, because there are some more movies this year, but it's one of the best of 2019 for sure. Uh, it's very poetic at times. Like I said, it's funny, it's violent, it's tragic, it's real. And like I said, it's a DC movie that really doesn't fit as a DC movie, if you get what I'm saying. So, anyway guys, I love the acting. I love the, um, I mean, going into CGI for a second, there really wasn't any. I mean, there's an Arkham Asylum, the hospital, the Arkham building, and of course the asylum. Uh, I can't really tell if that was CGI. I think the name was, but again, I'm not even going to touch CGI because they basically didn't use any of it. Um, but yeah, I love the acting. I love the atmosphere. I love, uh, Gotham was definitely the most dirty in this movie. And I just, I don't know. It's weird, though, see, having people say F-words and, you know, uh, hyper-violent blood. You know, it's not the most violent movie ever. It's definitely not as bloody as Vi uh, Logan or, you know, anything like that, but, or Hellboy 2019. But it definitely is the most gory DC film that I've seen today. And, uh, you know, it lends itself to the Joker character, you know. I mean, for you to make an origin story on Joker, you kind of have to have it be hard or not a PG-13, you know. Uh, thankfully, there were no kids in my theater. You know how I feel about that. I think you have to be 17 to see R. That's just me. I hate seeing kids in PG-13, too, but it's, it's just a thing, whatever. Uh, I can't change that. You know, I can get mad about it, but whatever, can't change it. Uh, but anyway, guys, so that ends my official review of Joker. I loved everything about it. It's, it's very tragic, and it's very good to watch. It's hard to watch, too, sometimes, because, you know, I've seen this in Logan, and they have, like, this long shot, right, of him, Logan, walking, or, uh, you know. So they don't really do it in Deadpool, because I know Deadpool's are, but it's more of a, a funny art. You know, it's a comedy. Um, Logan is not, and no, nor is Joker. And it's funny to see, like, there's one, there's a few scenes of Arthur just laughing with that disease, which, spoilers, you know, whatever, um, this disease where he just laughs when he gets nervous, which is a real thing, um, the camera just pans in on him for, like, a minute solid of him just laughing, and it's, it's uncomfortable, and then he turns into the Joker, and, you know, that scene where he's, uh, in the Joker, in the trailer where he's dancing, you know, where he goes on the talk show, it's pretty effed up, man, I mean, it's a dark as hell movie, I mean, it's darker than Dark Knight, you know, that movie has the word dark in the title, but anyway, uh, of course, like I said, I'm going to give Joker an A+. Please tell, you, uh, please tell me what you thought about Joker in the comments. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Uh, but please, no spoilers in the comments either, because I know not everyone saw it yet. Now, uh, again, that ends my review officially now, so if you did not see the Joker movie, please stop watching um, and go watch it, and then tell me what you think. If you hate it, love it, whatever, I respect your opinion. However, now we're going into spoiler territory. No. So, um, the ending. Let's just talk about the ending. I'm not going to talk too long about spoilers, but... I've seen these rumors going around, and uh, it was funny because my buddy was watching it, and there's a scene, that scene where Sophie, the African-American girl who's, uh, who's how she beats Domino from Deadpool 2, you know, they meet on the elevator, and she goes, Pff, you know, like a little joke, like, oh, this place is shit. And Arthur's like, yeah, you know, fuck this. You know, the same thing, right? You get this idea of that. But then he goes out with Sophie, and Sophie's at the uh, comedy club, haha's, ha and uh, she's with him at a diner, and they have sex, apparently, and, you know, he... Plants went on her in full freaking joke of makeup. So, I always thought it was kind of weird. And remember that scene where she's walking, and so he's like, yeah, you know, she actually says, she's like, yeah, fuck those guys. They're evil. They deserve it. And Joker's like, yeah, this girl, she gets me. I like this girl, you know. And I was always thinking, I'm like, for her to say that, it's kind of weird. For a normal person, and I get it, you know, those people were beating him up on the, so when he shot those three guys on the bus, or the subway, whatever, it, it was more self-defense than him just aggravatingly killing people. So I get that. You know, maybe, you don't know, shoot your bullies, like I said previously, but, you know, it is what it is. It, he had to do it in a way, you know, probably a broken ribs and whatever. So, but it was still weird for Sophie to say that. And, of course, you see that uh, when they're in the hospital with Joker's mom, or Arthur's mom, and you see the end where he's in the ho in the, her apartment, and my buddy got it. He was like, oh, man. And I'm sitting there with the internet, and I'm like, what? Am I missing something? Like, what happened? You know, did I fall asleep? And, of course, um, we noticed that she's, she's not there, and it's all just him. So, really, the only time Arthur and her meet is on the elevator and in the hotel, in the, you know, the room, uh, which is crazy, because, you know, it's, like, I hear people saying online, Arthur's, an, you know, a weird narrator, or he's, you know, an unreliable narrator, and it is true, but it's cool to think, and that's why this movie is so thought-provoking, too, because it, when I, when you see the trailers, you don't think about this whole dream thing in Arthur's mind, you know, being all crazy and, and foggy, it's just him get beat up, he shoots people, it's sad, it's tragic, it happens, whatever, but the, the fact that Sophie wasn't even real for half of that, and then, of course, when he's watching, uh, Murray Franklin, and he somehow transports there. When I first saw that, I was like, wow, that's a really crappy edit. That was, like, really fast. You know, that was, that was going to be one of my negatives in this review. But 
after thinking about it, I said, oh, he's imagining that, you know. So essentially, to, to make you even sadder for this movie, every time Arthur is genuinely happy when he's on Franklin's show and he's dating Sophie, every time he's happy, it's fake. He's thinking about it. He's never had a happy moment in his life. And that's what's sad, you know. That's why this movie is depressing for some people. And me, I'm not sad about it now, you know, it's just a movie, but it's sad when you're watching it. And of course, at the end when uh, it turns out that he shoots Franklin in the head, and people are saying that's not real. There's a theory that when he gets in his fridge, he died in the fridge. Now I'm no fridge sleeper. I don't know. I don't do that. I'm normal, I guess. I don't know. I don't. I'm not like Joker. Uh, but however, I don't think sleeping in a fridge would kill you. I don't think. I mean, maybe you slept in the freezer, but the freezers are small. I don't know. He's crazy. He's Joker. Now, um, a lot of like I said, people were saying that oh, he died in the freezer, and the rest of the movie is him thinking. I don't think that's true because a lot of the movie happens in the last 20 to 15 minutes. Like, it's it's really fast-paced in the end. Uh, so I don't think that's it. However, uh, the whole scene, like I said, with, with Sophie and uh, the, the whole orphan thing where he, where he kills his mom and all that, it's crazy. It's effed up. However, when he shoots Murray and there's this whole, like, you know, riot in the streets of Gotham, of course, that leads to uh, Martha and Thomas Wayne getting killed and eventually creating Batman. That's what I love, too. That's so cool. How Joker created a revolution... And ra some random dude in a clown mask, it wasn't even Arthur, just some random guy, says, you get what you effing deserve, just like what Joker said when he, sh when he shot Murray. And he, sh he kills Thomas and Martha. That's, of course, terrible. But it's also cool when you think about it, because Joker didn't shoot them like in 89, the movie, but he led a revolution that this guy heard what Joker said and thought, you know what, yeah, Thomas is an a-hole, I'm going to kill him. You know, and that, it's crazy to me. It's, it's, it's beautiful storytelling at its best, really. I mean... It's poetic, like I said. Of course, he gets in a car accident, and uh, these random dudes just pick him up, and they put him on the hood of the car. He takes his blood from his nose, and he kind of makes a smile, and he dances, right? And that's, I think, one of the best scenes in the movie, because he's always wanted to be this guy who was seen by people, right? On the Murray Franklin show. Murray effed up, quite literally. <laughs> I found that out when he does. Um, again, don't kill your bullies, people. Just talk to them and send it right. No, no violence in this world is a good thing. However, when... He goes like this, and he's all happy. He's doing his little dance on the, on the car thing. Um, you know, all these criminals in Gotham are like, Yeah, Joker! You know, they're flipping out. And that was Arthur's way of being noticed. The wrong way, but to him, it was the right way. So I think that's really cool. And of course, then we get that other really quick shot of him, you know, telling that, uh, that other lady psychiatrist, Oh, you wouldn't get the joke. And a lot of people are saying the joke is on us, the moviegoer, because the movie is just a whole dream. That's all it is. Uh, there's a very early on shot of Arthur uh, in a straitjacket going boom, boom on, on the, you know, hitting his head on the wall. And a lot of people said that he's been in this jail the whole time because that scene where he's slamming his head in the very end, the very, very end, he's talking to that girl and he runs away in the hallway, that is the same area. So a lot of people said that this whole thing, he's not even the real Joker. He's just a dude who thought of all this in his head because he knows he can't escape, but he can escape in his head. So I don't quite know, and that's the best part about this Joker movie, is that, yes, it's tragic, it's sad, it's funny at times, it's, it's violent, it's whatever. But there's so many layers, about, just like Last Jedi, there's so many layers to it where it really does demand multiple viewings. So again, uh, spoilers are pretty much over. I just wanted to tell you what I thought. Uh, as far as me, uh, you know, everyone's saying it's a dream or, oh, this is fake, I do know that some scenes are fake, like Sophie and uh, a few other things. However, the whole scene where he's like this at the very end before you cut to the jail when he's on top of the police car, I, there's no definite concrete answer if that is fake or not. Um, I'm going to say it's fake because realistically, and I know comic book movies aren't the most realistic thing, but this movie is supposed to be realistic. So when he shoots Murray and you know he goes to talk to his life, whatever, and it cuts out, um, I'm assuming the cops would just you know put him in handcuffs and take him to jail. Now, of course, it is possible that they got sideswiped and the cops died. It could have it could have happened. Who knows? But I'm just thinking that um, that whole scene where he's dancing and everyone loves him now as this bad guy, that was in his head. So after he shoots Murray, boom, hospital. Or, like I'm saying, people just say it's a whole dream and he's just imagining the whole thing in his cell. Uh, the director, Todd Phillips, did say he's going to tell us what he thought when he was writing it very, very soon. So I'll try to make a video on that and compare. But, yeah, I do think that, me personally, I think that this all really happened. Uh, him getting abused, his mom effed up, everyone basically treating him like garbage. Sadly, I don't want that to happen, um, but I think that is real. There are a few things like Sophie, and I think the car thing in the end, which is fake. Uh, but again, you don't know, you know what I mean? This is just what I think. So tell me 
Um, well, actually, you know, don't tell me. I resent that. Um, don't tell me that. Um, I just don't want you guys to spoil anything in the comments. So those are my spoilers. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, again, I love Joker. It's easily one of the best comic book movies of all time. It's such a game changer. And uh, it's so realistic that when I, I literally walked out of the theater, like, wanting to cry. And I'm a dude. I'm like, you know what? I, this is so freaking tragic. You know what I mean? And it really, because when you think of Joker, you think of, you know, Mark Hamill, like, oh, Bats, how you doing? I'm Joker, you know? Or like, you know, why are you so serious? Something like that. So it's a whole thing. Anyway, seeing Joker in this new light is really cool. Tell me what you thought about Joker. No spoilers. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.